What's up, everybody? Welcome to a Wednesday edition of The Squeeze. I am Tyler Conium. Full disclosure, if I seem a little bit tired, usually I record these first thing in the morning. I'm recording this one at 10.05 p.m. because I've got a busy early day tomorrow, so I've got to get this done. So hopefully the lines don't move too much. Uh, I don't think that'll be the case because I usually place the bets the night before anyways. I just record the video in the morning, but... Here we are recording the video at night, so I am recording this from the future. Uh, we had a good start to the week. Um, Monday was a 3-0 and day, so if you followed the bets on Monday, we went 3-0. and We're now approaching up 40 units on the year here on the squeeze, so if you like that and I've made you some money, click the subscribe button or tell one person that is also into sports betting that you know, hey, this guy's uh, won 40 units all tracked, all verified, all free, all the time up 40 units on the year. A subscribe would be nice. We hit the under between the New York Rangers and the New Jersey Devils. We hit the first half team total for the Boston Celtics. You might see that on the side of the screen. We might uh, go back to that well. And we had the Philadelphia 76ers plus 10, all those hit. We're actually, we were James Harden having two assists, two assists away from hitting a plus 580 same game parlay in that which was nice. So, as I mentioned, we're going to go back to the well, and we're going to go back to the Boston Celtics first half team total. <clears throat> Excuse me, game one, it was at 57. Game two, it's at 58 and a half. I'm still taking it. I'm still going to ride that train. They went way over. They were in the mid to late 60s by the time the first half ended in that first game. As I mentioned, you can basically take the same thing I said on Monday and say the same thing again. They were the first team, the top team in the NBA this past season to first half team totals. They averaged 60.8 first half points in the regular season. When you go back to their series against Atlanta in the last five games against Atlanta, they'd averaged 66 and they hit that again in game one against Philadelphia. I think that so Joel Embiid is doubtful for game two, so he's not going to be there. Philadelphia won game one. They played out of their minds, specifically James Harden and Tyrese Maxey. Is that going to happen again? Can they do that two times on the row, on the road, in Boston? Unlikely. I actually kind of like the Boston Celtics spread at minus 10, which is kind of crazy, just because it's going to be really difficult to do that two times in a row. I probably won't make that bet, um, but we'll have to kind of see how things go. But I look for Boston to come out real angry. That's kind of what they did in game one. It's sort of how I expected game one to go. I thought Philly would be close. I didn't think they were going to actually win the game, which they did. Boston's going to have to come out angry. They have to win this game. If Boston goes down 2 nothing, they go to Philadelphia, and Embiid comes back, it could be curtains for the Boston Celtics. So I look for them to come out on fire and score over 58.5 points for minus 110 at Pinnacle Sports. Moving to the NHL, we've got game one between the Carolina Hurricanes and the New Jersey Devils. I like the Carolina Hurricanes in this game. It's minus 116 at Bet Rivers. I just happen to really like the home team here. Look, New Jersey was great on the road. There's no doubt about that. They were 30 and 10 on the road during the regular season. Carolina was 30 and 11 at home. Both teams played exceptionally well at home. When you look at New Jersey, they're just coming off a series in which they beat the New York Rangers in seven games. They won the last three games of that series, 2-1, to 3-1, to one, and 4 nothing. Now, I know it's a new series. I know it's a new environment. It's very hard to win four consecutive games in the NHL, in the NHL playoffs. When you look at Carolina, of course, they are coming off their series with the New York Islanders. They won uh, two of the last three. They won 2-1 to one in overtime. I like Carolina is potentially the best team in the Eastern Conference. Now that we're down to New Jersey, Toronto, and Florida being the other three, we just saw the Florida Panthers beat the Toronto Maple Leafs last night, 4-2. to two. Not Toronto actually played pretty well. I like the way that they played. Florida played very well as well. Carolina, I think, could be the favorite to come out of the East. I think uh, the way that they play at home is going to play a huge advantage. I know the goaltending for New Jersey with Schmidt. He's 13-6, and six, the 1.94 goals against. Carolina's got Frederick Anderson. I think this game is probably going to be a little bit more high scoring than people expect. The total is set to 6.5. You might want to look at the over there. Sorry, it's set to 6. You might want to look at the over there. But 
I like the Carolina Hurricanes to get out, get an early jump on this series. They've been able to rest while the Jersey New Jersey Devils had to play a full seven games. They're playing at home. It is hard to win on the road in the NHL playoffs. We just saw the Florida Panthers do it, of course. But I'm going to take the Carolina Hurricanes on the money line, minus 116. That's at Bet Rivers. And our last bet of the day is the Edmonton Oilers and the Vegas Golden Knights. And where else do you go but an over? Regular season, uh, Edmonton was 50 and 29 to the over. Vegas was 39 and 42, so slightly under. But when you look at the playoffs, so you look at the totals for the Edmonton Oilers and their series against the LA Kings. Over six and a half, there was nine. Over six and a half, there was nine. Over six and a half, there was nine. Under six and a half, there were five. Under six and a half, it was under. They scored six, and then game one went over to seven. So. Four of the seven, four of the six games, sorry, went over. Three of them with nine goals, and one of them had six, so just barely an under or an under there. And then you look at Vegas, <coughs> excuse me, in their postseason against Winnipeg, they went under six, but then they went over five and a half. There were six over five and a half. There were nine over five and a half. There were seven over five and a half. There were six. So they went over four out of the five times, but their totals were set lower because of Hellebuck and the Winnipeg Jets. That's not going to be the case here with Edmonton. Edmonton's going to going to score two or three goals every single game you can pretty much take that to the bank it just is what it is and then when you look at vegas wins they scored four four five and five so you know and again in edmonton's wins they scored five six five and four so you can sort of predict that you're going to see five to two five to three four to three something in that range i'm surprised this total didn't I mean, you might reach seven in a playoff game, which would be crazy. It is juiced to the over at uh, minus 115 at DraftKings. But again, I expect this to be game one. Edmonton's on the road. Vegas is at home. Both teams are going to come out absolutely firing. So I, and I expect this to be an absolutely awesome series. But I'll take the over six and a half for minus 115 at DraftKings. So your card for Wednesday, I'm taking the Boston Celtics first half team total once again. Over 58 and a half for minus 110 at Pinnacle Sports. I'm taking the Carolina Hurricanes on the money line, minus 116 at Bet Rivers, And give me the Edmonton Oilers and Vegas Knights to go over six and a half. That's minus 110. 115 at DraftKings. As always, drop a comment if you're fading or following. You can follow me on Twitter at Tyler Conning for more picks and props throughout the day. TikTok and Instagram for just the picks portions and your audio is on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Have a great Wednesday, man. I love the playoffs. Let's talk sports.